the Universal Belay Standard, presented by the American Alpine Club and Adidas Outdoor. Belaying can cause immediate and graphic accidents when rules are broken and things go wrong. Sadly, many climbers have seen that happen or have experienced it themselves. Yet most every weekend we see slight errors in people's belaying which don't result in injuries. We tend to think that little mistakes don't hurt us. Big ones do. But statistics show that accidents most commonly occur when a medley of small errors fashion a perfect storm. Let's first look at some seemingly small and common mistakes. During setups, climbers don't always pay attention to details. On belay, Chelsea. Climbing, Chelsea. Climbing, John. This exchange seems fairly innocuous, but the team isn't paying attention to the details. The details matter. Let's look at all the little things that wouldn't hurt anyone by themselves. They might not even hurt anyone in aggregate, but not paying attention to details in general will eventually hurt somebody. What can this team refine? This knot will totally work like this, but it's not quite right. It would only take the climber a few seconds to tie a well-dressed knot with a six-inch tail that is right next to his harness. When it's compact, when it's well-dressed, when it's not obscured by any gesture of the tail, it's easier for everyone around to see, inspect, and notice. Next, his clothes make it hard for everyone to see his tie-in and buckles. So he should tuck this shirt in under his harness it's cleaner and more precise this way. Last, the tails behind every buckle should be tucked away. So he's going to do that too. This looks good at this point. In this case, the climbers rigged their ATC upside down. It probably won't ever be a problem. But when she blazes, one of two things have to happen because she's done this. She's either going to twist a belay loop as she blazes or she'll put a twist in the rope every time the rope moves through the ATC. She'll probably do both. When are you supposed to use a ground anchor? The ground anchor is one of those tools that often suffers from a lack of attention to detail and dangerous mistakes too. First of all, when should the ground anchor be used? It should be used when the belayer weighs less than 60% of the lead climber's body weight. That is a dramatic weight difference. If the average American male weighs 190 pounds and the average American female weighs 165 pounds, then most mixed gender climbing pairs will not need a ground anchor. Adult child pairings are more likely to need ground anchors than adult adult pairings. Here is how you figure it out. Multiply your body weight by 0.6. Whatever the figure, your belayer should be heavier than that if you're going to ignore the ground anchor. If she's going to use a ground anchor, she must remember this idea, that the anchor, the belayer, and the climber should always be in a straight line. If she clips in too long, that won't be the case. It's always more comfortable if the anchor is positioned on the brake hand side of her body. Otherwise, it will twist. Not good. As first mentioned, accidents most commonly occur when a medley of small errors fashion a perfect storm. As we've just seen, attention to detail is our best defense against all accidents, however big or small.